Hey, 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 everybody. It's your lovely Lotus Blossom Lizzie. And today we're going to be doing a spot of art journaling slash mixed media uh, art journaling. And you can see I'm taking out some of the things that I might be using, maybe or maybe not. I think I actually use most of the items here. And so before we get started, I always like to suggest that if these are the type of videos that you like, please make sure that you hit the thumbs up and also subscribe and hit the notification button so that you'll be notified when more videos like this one come out. So the first thing I'm doing is kind of not really protecting my surfaces. Um, I didn't think it was going to be necessary for me to cover everything up, but I did want to put something in between the pages. So I'm just using like some paper bags that I got from the grocery store because I always get paper instead of plastic and then I have tons of paper to use. So I took out some Liquitex Gesso and if this is your first time watching and you're a baby mixed media art journaling type of person you may not know what gesso is and gesso basically it helps to prepare the page to accept what you're going to put onto it so since I'm going to be using like a wet medium and this book isn't particularly for wet media I'm going to put the gesso down so that it you know things won't soak through the page just in case you didn't know so I'm putting down a thin layer but I'm trying to make sure that the page is is well covered so it looks like I'm using a lot of gesso and that's because these pages are ginormous it's hard to tell on the video but they are ginormous folks and they are bigger than two sheets of regular paper so now I'm taking out some dilutions paints because you if you've all been watching me, you know how much I love, love, love these creamy pots of paint. They make me so happy even just to pick them up. I just, I love these paints, you guys. So I thought I was going to just use just a little dab on here. And I'm using um, one of my blending tools to do this, one of my homemade blending tools. And I knew because these pages are so big, I had to put on just a few more dabs of paint. And then I just tried to spread it out evenly across the page and they go on so easily with the blending tools and that's why I use those. And then all I do is I reuse those, um, those blending pads over again. I just wash them out and they're good for the next time. So if I, if you try to just leave the paint on there and it's not going to work out for you, it's not going to work out. It's going to be hard and crusty. I think I watched a video of the maker of this and, and she said, you can just use the pads over again when you're doing this, but no, you can't. Um, it doesn't work out that way. So also just know that between each layer of paint and gesso, I, um, dried everything with my heat gun. So now I'm taking out these lovely little square mixed media pieces that I have. And I have these up in the shop as well. So if you go over to pleasantcreations.com, then you can pick up some of these for yourself because um, I love using these. I've used them before and they really add texture to the page. And I really, I just love using them. You can cut them any kind of way that you want. And here I'm cutting them into some triangles and I end up not using the triangles, but I just save those for later. So it's really easy to cut the plastic and they don't add too much bulk to the pages as well, but it adds a really nice layer of texture and you'll see how it comes out in the end. It's fantastic. It's fantastic folks. <laughs> so I'm just going to just shove those little triangles over to the side because you know, they, they just didn't work out for me. They didn't work out for me. I tried every which way to put them on here. So this this is the true process. This is the Liz thought process. I kind of had a little bit of an idea as to what I was going to put on the page. But, you know, things quickly went a whole different way. So now I'm just taking some matte media and I am putting it down. And this is kind of a liquidy type of matte medium. 
and it also is translucent when it dries but I'm just putting on some gobs of it just gobs of it because I want to make sure that these pieces don't come off the page for any reason now you could use like tape or whatever but since I'm going to be um, putting some paints over the top of these as well I want to make sure that there's really like not a lot of air bubbles on the side and things like that so I'm just really like kind of just slapping it on the page <laughs> and you'll also notice that those squares are not by any means like in straight lines or anything and I, I just have to tell you if you're gonna be doing mixed media or any art journaling you know if you are a perfectionist, this is not the craft for you. <laughs> it's not the craft for you. I often find the beauty in, you know, the imperfections and, you know, things being a little off center and all that stuff. So for me, putting these squares down this way is just perfect. So now I took out some clear gesso and I'm just really globbing that on as well. Now I could have just put the clear gesso down to begin with, but again sometimes you don't know where things are you know how things are going to go out i didn't know i was going to actually use the clear gesso over everything but now you see and i put down a lot on the page and i wanted to use the clear gesso because i still want that blue to come out um, in its kind of true color if i would have used like an opaque type of gesso then it probably would have been muted down and I didn't want that I didn't want it to be too muted down so I used the heat gun again now just keep in mind that those pieces are plastic so you don't want to keep your heat gun over those plastic over that plastic for too long or else it will start to bubble and it will start to melt so you have to be careful with that so I guess the most optimal way to to do this would have been to let it air dry but I'm a little bit impatient. That's why I got the heat gun in the first place. <laughs> so now I'm putting down some green and it is, I think it is fresh lime. It is, yep, it's fresh lime. And this is also a dilutions paint. And I, again, I'm just kind of dabbing this down in with a circular blending tool and I didn't really like those hard lines that I was getting. And I have to say, at this point, it was looking a little bit messy to me. <laughs> and so even after I used a wet wipe to kind of, you know, blur everything together, but I still was feeling it. I was like, uh oh, this, this whole project is kind of going to the left. But let me tell you, at this point in the whole process, I knew that, you know, you really can't tell how things are going to be at the end. So I just kept on trudging through. I had an idea that I was going to use these three layers of paint. I've kind of used these three paints together before. And I really liked the, you know, the cohesiveness of the colors. Now, one thing that I like to mention, and I've mentioned this before, is with the dilution paints, when you're layering them, what happens is the top coats have kind of kind of a translucent kind of look to them and you can really see through them and it kind of it, it's, it feels like it pulls the colors the bottom colors up so that's kind of what happened to this so things kind of came out really more green than I thought once it started drying it still looks a little bit yellow on here but some of the green came up from the bottom so I guess the stronger colors kind of take over but that's okay again like I said, right now I felt like it was being a little bit, it was a little bit messy, but I just kept on going. So I also took like whatever extra blue I had, I just kind of put it on the edges for part of the frame and that kind of softened things up. And I actually, I felt a little better about it once I did that. <laughs> Now I'm taking out my little uh, stamp and I believe this is a Prima stamp. Uh, I, you know, I have these in my nice little pockets now, so I just grab them. I don't even look at who made them and all that good stuff. And at first I was going to put on a block and I said, nah, she's kind of stiff. I can pretty much put her down. Now I am using a dye ink pad by Ranger and the color is Anchor. 
I picked Anchor. I took out a few pads and then I decided to use Anchor. Anchor is supposed to be kind of like a navy blue, but once I put it down on this palette here per se, it kind of had a darker color. It looked kind of black, which was okay. Cause I think if I would have used uh, maybe a black ink, it would have been too dark for this. So it's still dark, but I feel like it was a better choice when I did this. Now I am pulling out some more stamps and these are from Inka Dinka Doo. I remember that <laughs> and they are some floral stamps and I wanted to try to kind of place them down before I start stamping and I don't always do that. I'm the kind of girl I just kind of go for it but this time I wanted to kind of check it out but now this is kind of a rookie kind of tip as well as if you're going to place them down place them down upside down like like you would be stamping them um not like I did here you know first I put them down face up and I said oh that's not gonna work for me so I had to turn them over so I hope I didn't just confuse the mess out of you <laughs> So next, I'm just inking them up and we're gonna go for it. Hopefully they won't slide around because the Prima stamp slid a little bit when I put it down, but you, it doesn't matter because, I, you know, there's a fix for everything. So the other side, I wanted to do kind of um, some different, some different types of stamps than I had on the other side, but I still want to keep it kind of in the floral theme as well. So then I pulled out some more, I believe, I think they're Inky Dinky Do uh, stamps. I, you know, I just don't remember, but uh, I like them. And so I pulled those out. <laughs> and so I'm going to put those down also. Those are probably, uh, they're just, they're just floral stamps. They're a little bit of a different style than the ones I have over on the right, but they still worked out. So we're inking them up and we're going to put them down and voila Ta -ta. well one of the stems didn't come out that well but i wasn't that worried about it because i immediately figured out i could fix that i could fix that maybe with a pen or something that's what i was thinking at the time when i put the stamps down so originally i was gonna leave it with just the stamps and just go for it but i was like you know what i'm going to I'm going to be an artist, y'all. I'm going to be an artist today. And I'm going to try to paint this in. This is the first time I have done this technique in my art journal. Because usually, you know, I definitely couldn't freehand this. So the stamps help me to be able to uh, be an artist. <laughs> so now I just have to color within the lines. And then that would be perfect. So the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to make this african-american woman because you know i don't want to say not not a black woman because i'm not black i'm brown so i'm making her a brown woman as well so what i did was i kind of mixed some acrylic paints i mixed some white and i mixed the brown so that the skin wouldn't be too dark because i don't know anything about skin tones but i thought that this might look okay and you also have to take into consideration that with the acrylic paints that they're definitely they go on darker and then they get lighter as they dry up which is not something I took into consideration but it worked out for me <laughs> so I put this on super speed because it it really truly took me a while to actually paint everything now you see I'm fixing that stem and I there you go see it's fixed so it took me a while because this was like um, painting in a coloring book and if you have painted in one of those adult coloring books oh my goodness it's you know it could literally take you days to get finished but it didn't take me days to finish this it only took me hours so I definitely did a lot more painting than I thought I was gonna do but I'm glad I did it because well you'll see it came out lovely and I didn't try to do anything fancy smancy I just tried to stay within the lines now you'll also notice that I'm using like a seriously humongous brush well you might not really 
understand when you're looking at it that it's a humongous brush but it is and I am attempting to buy some better brushes so this one has a really nice tip on it and it's new newer one of my newer brushes so that probably helps too so I was really able to stay within the lines even though this brush was like just it was really just big so you can see also I still try to keep things with kind of within the color scheme of the whole um, background um, I don't feel like the girl got lost in there or anything I thought it was kind of just a perfect kind of a perfect color palette to go with the background and I just went through and I just kind of just gave everything a light touch of paint so nothing too heavy and the background kind of came through as well and I think it just had like a beautiful effect so I kind of sped this up like uh, on super speed so that you can you know can really take it all in but you can always speed up if you would like you know not to see me color within the numbers. to say with every part that I colored in I just got really excited because I had never tried this technique before and I just really really love how this whole thing was coming together. Now it may not look like it but I am really painting really slow because I really didn't want to mess up at this point. You know, everything was perfect for mixed media style art journaling here. And so I didn't want to mess anything up. So I was really painting really slow. Now, I was really feeling like an artist at this point. I was mixing up some paints and all kinds of stuff. Go, Lizzie, go. So now I'm all done with the painting part and now I'm taking my stamps out and you'll see what the blocks are for now. So I'm actually going to put some words on here and I didn't realize I had such a glare on here. Now the that ink pad is really wet too so you really can't see what the top words were but don't worry I'm going to show you all a really good picture of the whole thing once it gets finished but the top word says words actually it's w-o-r-d-s <laughs> It says words are love on that side on to the other side and romance is on the other side and you can see um, I thought out how many of the squares I needed to put down so I did know that I was gonna put these words down ahead of time so next I decided to kind of give all the little blocks a frame and it was very easy to do I wasn't worried about those pieces coming up because I had glued them down very well and so I gave everything a frame and that really that really made made those pieces stand out even more so not only did they have texture but going around them kind of gave it dimension as well 
So next I took out my uniball pins. I have my gold one and I have the white one also. And I decided to strategically put some hearts on, on some specific spots on the page. Now you'll also see when I stamped the letters again, they didn't come out perfect. And at first I was a little worried and I said, just go through the process list and the imperfections will really just make this page very unique and beautiful and it did. So even though these two pages, I did them together, they really almost came out as two separate layouts, but I really love the way they turned out. Now, my white uniball pen was kind of, it was acting a little janky on me. So I decided to use like some correction fluid. Now this is the first time I used a correction fluid and I probably should have did a little bit more testing. Why you say should I <laughs> did a little bit more testing? Well, because, you know, my hearts came out a little, they were a little blobby when I used that and I was kind of disgusted because I would, this is like the last, the last little pieces that I'm putting on. So I don't really want to mess anything up. So I just left that alone for a minute and I put down some of my homemade enamel dots and I, I love those enamel dots and I need to make some more. They're really easy to make. So I put those down and then I just went around them with a the gold uniball pen kind of again give them some dimension so the the enamel dots have the texture and then the gold pen gave it like some dimension so I decided to kind of fix what I messed up I would go around it with the gold pen and that worked out for me I liked it and I wanted to add some hearts at the bottom because after all it's romance it's all about love and romance on these pages <laughs> And then of course, I just kept looking and I was like, I need more, I need more. You know how I roll. And so I went through with the white uniball pen and it just added, you know, some more pieces and some more little dots here and there and some veins on to the leaves as well. And I took, I, you know, I took a look back at the page and I decided also that I was going to go ahead and kind of frame this a little bit more. So I took that anchor colored ink pad and I just kind of ran that across. Instead of using the, the Distress inks, I just used this and it worked out great. Finally, I think it is a wrap and this came out so beautiful and I can honestly say and I know I say this every time I do one of these pages this is like my most favorite page in the world you know why because I feel like a real artist y'all like Right now when I'm talking, I feel a tear coming out of my bad eye, okay? I am so happy and ecstatic about this page. And truly, words are love. And just doing this art journal is love. And this page, you know, the, the lady, I, you know, I think that's Lizzie in this page. That's Lizzie in this page as she's walking through a field of lovely flowers and crazy insects like the butterfly and the dragonfly dragonflies are kind of crazy okay I digress anyway so if these are the type of videos that you like again make sure that you give this video a thumbs up it helps for other people to find them and also make sure you subscribe and hit the notification button so with that I'm going to say love peace and hair grease from your sweet lotus blossom and lovable lizzie have a fantabulous day and go walk through the flowers. Music